Daily Bible Time, Wednesday morning. Good morning. Our focus today on just a couple of verses. We have seen uh, yesterday that Isaiah called out, Woe to me, for I am ruined. I am a man of unclean lips. I live among a people of unclean lips. And because my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of armies, woe to me, for I am a sinner and God is holy. Now what can, what will the Almighty do about the sin of the prophet? Here's our verse, verse 6. One of the seraphim flew to me flew to Isaiah, and in his hand was a glowing coal that he had taken from the altar with tongs. Peterson says, unlike the early kings who normally exclude and destroy rebels, the Lord takes the initiative in reconciliation with his enemies. The Lord provides a way of atonement. Now the action of taking a coal, a glowing coal, and touching it to Isaiah's lips it, that's a little hard to interpret. What does it mean for that piece of glowing coal to be taken and placed on the lips of the prophet? Well, we do note that Isaiah had called out earlier that the problem is with my lips. Woe to me, I am a man of unclean lips. And so Mocha says the touching of the lips shows how God ministers to the sinner at the point of confessed need. Um, listen to the voice of the seraphim, verse six, uh, sorry, chapter 6, verse 7. He touched my mouth with it and said now that this has touched your lips your iniquity is removed and your sin is atoned for the key thing is the explanation is that this action by this action Isaiah's iniquity or guilt is taken away by God and his sin is atoned for now as David Peterson says the terminology of the sacrificial system is used to indicate that a comprehensive work of dealing with sin has been effected. Now, divine forgiveness um, has happened based on the removal of sin. The sin was the obstacle to fellowship and the forgiveness and the removal of sin both achieved by God himself. Now, how does that happen? Well, we don't actually see how that happens till we get to Isaiah 52, 53. At that point, it becomes clear that God achieves this through the death of his servant, who he makes an offering for sin. But uh, Peterson notes the servant um, in Isaiah 52, 53 will make many accounted to be righteous, for he will bear their iniquities. Now, the whole chapter is actually the unique experience of the prophet Isaiah. There's a temptation to generalize to us or a temptation to generalize to preachers today. Uh, we do note that biblical figures like Moses, Samuel, they experienced distinct calls to prophetic ministry. Uh, and we know that the Lord is preparing Isaiah for his role as an authorized messenger in the particular situation of history that he's in. And so verse eight, I heard the voice of the Lord asking, who will I send, who will go for us? I said, here I am, send me. This is Isaiah we're talking about, not Dominic, not you. Barry Webb says it was this encounter with the Lord and in this encounter with the Lord that Isaiah's understanding of God and his particular word mission is crystallized. Um, so I don't think in Isaiah 6 that we, 21st century Christians, are challenged to become prophets or missionaries. Rather, we are to see Isaiah as a unique figure. Um, and we're challenged as a result of this, as seeing his commissioning, to listen to the prophet Isaiah as a prophet of God, whose sin was atoned for, who's sent by God. We are to see God through Isaiah's ears as, and, and, and eyes as we keep reading. Now, David Peterson asked several questions. We're left wondering at this point, how can Israel be renewed? How can Israel become the center of blessing of the nations, the center of blessing of the nations that it's destined to be? How will the Holy One rescue Israel from its pattern of self-destruction? How will he make Israel the channel of salvation for the rest of the world? And we are, I think, challenged to think about our own place before God. How can any of us survive in the presence of God when we too are men, women of unclean lips. Um, and we are challenged to compare ourselves with, well, God's extraordinary purity, God's extraordinary majesty, and to be dismayed at our uncleanness and to reflect again that we do need our sin atoned for and to glance forward to Isaiah 53, 
we all like sheep have gone astray. And our iniquity is paid for by the sacrifice of the shepherd. Thanks for joining us. Daily Bible time today. Look forward to your company Thursday morning. And uh, we're going to explore the whole issue that the people will not listen to Isaiah. And then the people don't listen to Jesus. And actually, they don't listen to us today. Father God, we thank you that though we are unclean, um, you minister to us. You provide atonement for us through your servant, Jesus. And we thank you so much for that in his powerful name. And we pray that you would help us to listen and learn and look at the prophet Isaiah and how he points to you and points ultimately to Christ. Amen. Amen.